Ramble. Oi, I'm British and I'm in London for Christmas. Welcome to Guilty <laughs> Pleasures, the show that loves what it loves. Today, we're talking about the holiday. The Kate Winslet, Jack Black, Cameron Diaz, Jude Law holiday classic. Guys, do you feel that little chill in the air? It's that time of year where it's appropriate to start thinking about Christmas yeah. time. And not the day after Halloween, you fucking oh. heathens. But now, I have did it. put my Christmas decorations up November 1st. Really? Yeah, my whole house is decorated already. I put candy canes Good out, stuff. got a ladder, put lights God, up. I am a firm believer in doing it at the appropriate time, which is after Thanksgiving. But the, you get to enjoy it for like 10 days then. Yeah. That's not enough time. And then by the time it gets to Christmas, well, you're like, I'm sick days, of this shit. I would leave Christmas lights up, no joke, in my house all fucking year mm-hmm. round. They just make me feel good. It made me feel sad after Christmas because it's just like, oh, I'm still, I'm done with Christmas. I'm done with that day. It's past. <laughs> Fuck. Now we have nothing else to look forward to. Yeah, wait, Valentine's Day? No. New Year's? New Year's, I guess. Easter? No. Guys, we're talking about the holiday. It's, it's one of those modern rom-com classics that makes you feel good inside. And Kelsey, this is not an official selection of yours, but this is a Death. fave Go off queen. This Tell me about movie it. movie is the perfect encapsulation of what it feels like to be a woman, period, <laughs> against a man, period. It's somehow you can relate to every single character. You've dated the men that are in this. You're rooting for them. You see yourself in them, so you're mad at them at certain points. And somehow it is a holiday film because they are switching houses over holiday time, Christmas specifically, I'll say it. But this movie, The Holiday, I do not know how this could possibly have the rating that it does on Rotten Tomatoes, considering we have Cameron motherfucking Diaz, Kate motherfucking Winslet, Jack motherfucking Black, June motherfucking Law, Dustin fucking motherfucking Hostin, James motherfucking Franco, the guy from Office, fucking... James Krasinski. The, the girl from Bad Moms. Like, this is a... St- Agatha's all along up in Thank this you. shit. Thank yeah. like you. Catherine Hahn. The Hunt. fact that... Catherine Hahn, like, this movie is so fucking good. I dare either one of you to say something bad about it. This is the holiday. Well, I don't know. We didn't give a synopsis. You want to do it? <laughs> <laughs> but do, is this one of those movies that you watch every year? Mm-hmm. I, you, you strike me, Kelsey, as someone who's like, when when the leaves start mm-hmm. turning, proverbially speaking, we live in LA and it's always mm-hmm. the fucking same here. You have your your movie, your mm-hmm. DVD collection that you roll out and you go, oh, it's time to make some hot yep. cocoa and watch If you the don't holiday. think that I drank some Zaddyco Mission Chill last night in bed with my cats, <laughs> just snuggled all the Hell fuck yeah. way up, you are out of your goddamn mind. This is like the perfect sick movie. This is a perfect feel good movie. This is a perfect family movie. This is a perfect holiday movie. Yeah. This doesn't check a single, doesn't leave a single box unchecked. Unchecked. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know Garrick, you think this movie is just, <gasps> I think it's so cute. I think it's very cute. Um, I don't think it's bad or anything like that. I, I think it's uh mid. <laughs> I think it's I think it's pretty mid. You just used the word mid to yeah, yeah, describe yeah. a film. Yeah, okay, got I think it. it's pretty mid. I think it's um <clears throat> it's almost Bridget Jones's diary. Um and so on and so forth. I'm sorry. Okay, so just so you know, I told you guys this in group chat last night. I have three movies that I've ever bought mm-hmm. to keep in my iTunes library. It right. is Harry Potter one, Harry Potter three. And the holiday. <laughs> nice. Those are those are the good picks of the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. And you could have also just bought Love Actually. That's another one you could have purchased. I watched that for the first time when I started dating Jared. And for some reason, yeah, no I had never seen it. I just I had heard about it so much in the Zeitgeist that I was like, I fucking get it. But I think it's that one's a little too broad for me. It's too many characters. It's too many. This is the perfect fucking amount. This is four people this is two yeah. women switching lives yeah. over the holidays to escape their fears and they run into the lives that they actually want yeah it's the it's and one of their fears is the fact I, that they can't cry you basically just oh nailed the God, synopsis but I'll, I'll take it from there you you've got 
Kate Winslet and Cameron Diaz are two unlucky, out-of-love girls. Mm -hmm. uh, Cameron Diaz works in Los Angeles as a high-powered movie trailer exec. Yes. Uh, and she she's coming off of a bad breakup. Kate Winslet, she's a little, she's a writer in, in the countryside of the of Britain, and she has a little Bridget Jones uh -huh. situation where she's in love with her boss, but her boss is engaged uh -huh. to someone else. Ugh, what are they gonna do if only they could just step out? They go online and they decide to switch mm -hmm. houses. Kate goes to Los Angeles. Cameron goes to the British countryside oh. where there Cameron falls in love with the beautiful, charming, Hottie McHatterson mm. Jude Law. And Kate falls in love with an old man <laughs> through which she gets to meet Jack Black. How dare you? Jack Black deserves better. This is the holiday. Oh. Uh, where do you want to where start? Where can't Kelsey? we start? Let's just start with the feel goodness of this all. Okay. Yeah. This, you have to understand from a woman's perspective, yeah. this is like our adventure time. I don't know. I'm trying to relate to you. Like whatever, like a man's dream is yeah. going away <laughs> to a foreign, but yet comfortable where you can cozy up in bed and forget about work responsibilities, comfortable enough to where you can flirt a little bit. Cause you're yeah. just not in your regular area. This is your forgetting Sarah Marshall. Yes, sure. I love that film. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love that movie. It's like you. <laughs> That's fucking you perfect. You feel so high the whole time in wish fulfillment in two different ways, right? Because you have both of them are are love sick in different ways. Mm -hmm. You've got Kate Winslet's character is the um, codependent. She can't let go of this guy who mm. kind of drags her along that gaslights her throughout the relationship. Uh, she's a love addict, you might want to say, which we've all girls have been there. And then you've got Cameron Diaz, who is the commit. Tell me about <laughs> who's it. Who's the commitment phobe who her like <laughs> funny character trait is that she's never cried. Yeah. And she's kind of like, and I'm making her quotes because we know this is all bullshit, patriarchal constructed gender bullshit, but she's like the man. She's like she's the breadwinner in her household. Yeah. She's yeah. the boss. She, she has no emotion. She doesn't want to get committed and attached. Yeah. And so for both of them to be able to exchange lives is like, every girl just wants to get up and be swept away and find a foreign love and, Tell me. You get about. it. Does this does this tickle your fancy at all? Oh yeah. I mean, again, it's uh forgetting Sarah Marshall. It's the same the same <laughs> but situation. But that's based around a breakup. I know. As is oh, this. Wait, you're right. Yeah. It just seems sadder. <laughs> so okay, so my my whole thing about this movie is that I feel like it was uh two stories mm -hmm. that she wrote mm -hmm. and she was like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to join them at the hip. I, you know, like just, I'm going I'm to put them together. Fine, fuck it. Yeah. And that'll be two hours. But I do think that it was like 30 minutes a little, it was two, 30 oh! minutes too long. I didn't get be enough of this be though. Because of the fact that it was like the switching lives thing. If you separated yeah. both of them, it would be Honestly, like an hour. And you'd be like, oh, that's not enough movie. But you put them together. Mm. Now you have two. And it was it's an interesting a whole format. Film. Honestly, Nancy Myers, yes. one, of, one the of the greats. We it's stand. complicated. She was like, yo, stuff. what if I just write two yeah. half movies <laughs> and, and still, still get paid get for it? Paid no, and but I see. And she gamed the system. Oh, good for she her. Both I'm of you. on board. You're, miss you're not getting it. No, no I'm on board. It's, it's not that she wrote two half movies. She wrote one woman two ways. Like I have been the Kate Winslet. Okay. I have been the Cameron okay. Diaz. I have fallen in love with the Jack Black. Right. I have chased after the guy that didn't want me. I've chased after the guy that had baggage. Like she was able to, to wish fulfill and like, like two different yes. or the opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah, of one Because woman. you're not one person. Like you're yeah. not one type no, of lover. No, you you're like just... men coming out of your life that enamor you and fuck you up. And then a woman comes away and you're like, Whoa, I like the right, right, pussy. Right. what's happening. And right. it's like, you, you see, Rather than having one woman choosing between yes. two, you just have both of them and yes. you see the whole wish fulfillment of both. And you can situations. see things before they're coming because you're like, oh, I know this type of girl or like, yeah. that's just like my friend or like, oh, I've had a, a, a gal pal in that scenario. Yeah. So she's just able to cover the swath of love and womanhood in a way that is like, bitch, when I tell you the fucking wind had a character of love, I was like, she just she knows how to write love aesthetic she's an incredible writer so well yeah For, first fucking pleasure yo okay this movie 
does not waste yes. any time. Cameron Diaz gets to the countryside. Knock, knock. Oh, shit. Jude Law's yep. at the door. He has a beautiful spray tan <laughs> face, even so though they are tan. in the coldest, most desolate place <laughs> I've ever seen in my yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, they probably put that tan on them, taunt it, t- that tan on him mm-hmm. because of how gray uh, London is or whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. Or, or the the stone movie is. cabin she goes right. to. And they're just like, we just got to. London has never looked warmer than in this movie. Just based on oh my Jude Law's everybody, Everybody was warm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cameron Diaz's eyes were so blue. Oh my God. I was like, did they just turn up the blues on the ca- on the did, camera, did on the I, edit? Like, was, what is who did the color pass on this shit? It doc? was too late for me to text in the group chat last night. But all I could think about was when you discovered Zach's blue eyes yeah. for the first time. That's like, I felt like I discovered the color blue for, for the, the first yeah, right. time. You're just like, oh my God. Jesus. It, I sapphires. thought she was, she's like white she was Walker, Walker, Walker status. status. She was <laughs> a, like some kind of glowing yeah. eye, a, electric yes. powered character. And I was just like, is this a superhero movie? I don't know. I'm not sure. She's about to shoot some shit out of her eyes. Yes. But they were extremely blue. Yes. Also, side note, I thought we were watching Shallow How. And it's not that. So. <laughs> that movie. <laughs> we obviously, that's a guilty pleasure that I feel like if we did that as an episode, we'd get canceled. We would yeah, get right written off of YouTube. But yeah. I, I was like, oh, I know. We'll I do know the holidays, the one with Jack Black, and he's yeah. a love interest. Is that Shallow How? I don't think we should watch no, Shallow How. No, no, no. That was um, the other one that I kept thinking of is the Queen Latifah holiday one yes. where she finds out she's having. Get, well, that I don't she's want to dying. Right? Okay, you did. Yeah, no, no, that's uh, like, yeah. but that's a premise. And she like me. spends all her money to go yeah. to Europe, and I was like, though there is a, there is a fulfillment type of around the holidays. Yeah, you do getting the everything. fuck out of your yeah. regular routine and being just completely swept up in like a crazy whirlwind romance that you get in this. But that's yeah. my first pleasure. Not movie begins. Knock knock on the door. You, okay, obviously a lot of rom-coms are going to do the, oh, will they, won't they? We're going to yeah. tease it out. Jack Black and Kate Winslet, it's that slow burn. Yeah. But you're going to put that mm-hmm. hunk of man Jude Law in this movie? Uh-uh. They fucking in the first yeah. scene. Yeah. Let's yeah. go, like, baby. I'm here to fuck. I'm on board. And so a uh, big twist, a big spoiler that um, Jude Law's character is that he is what? the brother of of Kate Winslet, whose mm-hmm. house Cameron Diaz is staying at. So yeah. he doesn't know that she's switched lives yeah. with this woman. But yeah, and then they kept that from the audience <laughs> yes. as if to say like, oh, this is gonna be a huge thing. And then it wasn't. <laughs> Are you kidding me? It's this nice. three-way phone call scene with the Kate three, Winslet I mean, was the three, best three, fucking scene of all time. It was fun. Yeah, that was fun. But the, it like, didn't like change anything. They were still of fucking around. It did hurt. She found out her brother's It's not fucking. Bruce Willis at the yeah. end of Six right. like no. huge, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. But yeah. can I say something about the men in this movie too? Because yeah. there is a type Do of it. guy that I wrote about that I can only describe as the plain face actor man. Yeah. The only way I can describe them is that they are English mm-hmm. and they're either like the second leaning man, but Don't also the prince in like medieval movies. That's hilarious. And you know exactly the type because of fucking Tom, guy. Tom wants gas. Got gas. The Tom? Tom wants from, gas? Wants gas from Succession played my god is it mr darcy mm-hmm. in yeah um yeah it, yeah, yeah yeah same plain, thing plain face british, british guy, but also but, renaissance man yeah and as soon as you put sideburns on him he's handsome. a king he's a king you give him a, a cape a and that's who kate winslet's boss was to me i don't know that actor's name Oh, thank you. Jasper. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. That dude's, See? <laughs> that dude's fucking pube hair. Like, I, I was like, this is the guy? This is the guy that's stealing Kate Winslet away Kate from me. Fucking w- Kate, Kate motherfucking Kate Winslet. Winslet. I, I, you? Perfect I wrote down. That is the greatest <laughs> one of the actress greatest of all time. I, I, wrote mayor, down, mayor, I wrote down. Fucking mayor of motherfucking you, East Town. You're going to tell me. Let's fucking go. go. Motherfucker. See, that's what the fuck I'm talking about. Kate I Winslet Zach, is getting this is fucking dick-stified. Because he knows. Jasper fucking he knows. You He fucking knows. I love Oh, my God. He's got beautiful fucking eyes for a reason. I'm so Kate happy. Winslet is so I'm out of so the league happy. of both of the men that she fucks with and the movie itself. Mm. Oh, Are you out well, of your fucking well, hell? Oh, yeah. Kate Winslet, you went from Titanic okay. to this. She looks good. <laughs> this she is looks after great. Eternal she Sunshine, Garrick. This is, looks, after this is after Eternal Sunshine. She looks good as Eternal Sunshine. <laughs> 
You need to. Oh my God. Are you out of your fucking mind? Both Are you of out you of your fucking leave. mind? Okay, this has turned into Kelsey Dara's podcast, Just <laughs> Pleasures. And it's Are just you kidding me, me talking about how Kate Winslet is perfect Are for this film. Kidding? No. You, you know, she. I. Her and Cameron Diaz, it was the first time I believed her and Cameron Diaz were on the same fucking level. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm really gonna guess. Of what? Of what? I'm not. So you agree with me? Of what? This movie made me believe of, both of, of them. Both being uh, humans? No, both being good actors. Like, I saw them too, and this- Oh, I'm gonna put a big old pin I'm in that. I'm just saying. Yeah, let's put a pin in that. Listen. <laughs> Back to plain faced man. You got, yeah, I'm you got sorry. Kate Winslet's boss, plain faced guy. And then you've got that uh, Cameron Diaz, his ex boyfriend, who she punches twice in the face, which I kind of fucking love it. She punched him right in the face. Both plain faced guys. Yeah. It's like, what do they bring to the table? She's a high powered movie executive. And the only thing that could fulfill and satiate her baby blues is a big old English guy. <laughs> big old English guy. No American guy yeah. could fucking live up to her that standard. You have to have this like British yeah. exotic spray tan but motherfucker. I, I do like that it, it kind of like touched on how she could only love somebody who Add it to the whimsy of her yes. life. You know, like like it, it's, somebody's got to be far off. He's got to be very unavailable. All of this pretty much unavailable because of how far yeah. uh, far away he is. And we're just wrapped up in He's this whirlwind dad. romance and all of that mm -hmm. stuff. And that's the only thing that could really uh, yeah. fill that romance void that she yes. has because she's at such a high level. And to the opposite of that is Kate Winslet with Jack Black is that she's kind of like this love addict, love sick, can't can't see herself anywhere else and she has to physically remove herself and move across the country to find the stable, available, emotionally available man. But here's the thing I gotta say about that with okay. Jude Law, okay? And that this is what fully makes this movie a fantasy, what? is that you can, a man that good looking in a small town cannot be trusted. A man who is that uh -huh. beautiful living in a tiny British countryside he, in real life, he's a nightmare. Okay, I mean, he is in a small town. He's in a small town. No, he's not. Or he is in a town, let's say. <laughs> Whatever. He is off to himself in that fucking cottage. Okay. But he has two girls. Yeah, he has he's, two children. Like, all he, all he cares about is his, his little girl. So I, I'm guessing he doesn't have a lot of time to date. Wait. And he's just out there. Because he's not going to be fucking around. Because also... I yeah. don't know if you guys remember this. This is my, from the, I mean, the first or second episode of the podcast, my true fantasy, uh, a widowed father. <laughs> it you just, said that. Are you kidding me? You did say you would, that. You would, as soon as he came on screen and he had those little girls. Sequoia, turn off the podcast. Yeah, yeah, this isn't yeah, yeah, for yeah. you. I'm not, not that she, I'm going to kill Sequoia. <laughs> I just don't want her to hear that your dream is to be a single father, so you're more desirable. Oh, no one was insinuating that. Yeah, Eric. we don't want her to die. I don't want her to die. Yeah. Of course, I don't want her to but die. But if she did, no one would never thinking you were going to kill her. I wouldn't be thrilled, but I do think it's a good look. You would be drowning in pussy, sorry. It, it is a good look on any man from the outside, from the in, outside looking in. From the outside looking in, as soon as that door opened and you saw those little girls and you saw the way that Cameron yes. Diaz, her face melted, yes. and she's like, Oh wait, yeah. but okay. Can I, gotta, I ask? Did I you? Because you had seen this before, times. right? I, I, no, I'd never seen if it. If your question is yes, I did moan when the door opened. I went, "Oh, yeah, yeah, there okay. it is." See? Yeah, but I said so it. you, Zach, you hadn't seen it before. I this was my first time. I thought it was such a good rug pull moment where the whole time you think that you think he is a fuck boy in this little town, yeah. hot guy, yeah. and then you hear about Olivia and you hear about uh, whatever the other daughter's name is. Did you know he was talking about his kids? Can I tell you what? Yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see it. I didn't see it, didn't see it coming in at all. It didn't come. I didn't see it coming in at all. I thought it was you know either people he stated or. Do I need to be the was. one to say this, or is someone else going to bring it up that both of the children um, weren't the cutest? <gasps> oh no! Are you? Oh, that, is that me? Is fucking that me? Mind? Is I that me? Do I, have to, do I have to be the one Are to say Are you out of your mind? Huh. Blonde hair, blue eyes, I, cute little American girl doll cut bangs. Shut the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> I, I, I thought they were adorable. I thought yes. they were very cute. Zachary, what is your idea of cute child? Bowie. 
<laughs> I'm going to show you a baby picture of me as a baby. I know I what you look yeah, like. You look like an old high. woman. I know what your baby was. <laughs> not, not when I was an adolescent. Okay. I, I hit okay. a fucking cliff side. I'm talking okay. baby I'm Zach. sorry. Garrick's little, Garrick's little nephew. He's oh, adorable. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you well, have cute. You have a whole cute family. Yeah, thanks. So, Kelsey, I feel like you're not, um, forgive me for saying this, you, you, don't love children, uh, but him him as a daddy, did that still oh, do it for fuck you? Fuck right. yes. When yeah. Jared holds my goddaughter, I'm instantly like, I'm another woman. I am ready to reproduce. I am here yeah. to be evolutionarily only. Yeah. And then I wake the fuck up and go like, oh, wait, we're overpopulated and I'm bisexual and busy. Um, yeah. But absolutely, there's a sensitivity. <laughs> and let me say this, a fucking uh, like, there's a, a humanness to being able to take care of another human. Yeah. Like a dog, hot. Fair. You know, roommates, not so hot. Children, very hot. Yeah. And they they all, they all both seem very mal-mannered and all of this stuff. And yeah. they felt like they were fed well. Smart. Yeah. And he's like, I've been handling this for two <laughs> years and it's it's totally fine. <laughs> They all seem like they're fucking well. done like with like, that, calling them ugly. How yeah, you called them ugly, you? so you can't be mean yeah, to them at all. Yeah, you can't all. say shit. But like, yeah, they seem, <laughs> they, they, the, the house was clean, yes. all kinds of shit. Yes. It just seemed like he had his shit together while also yes. his life was kind of falling apart. Yeah, because he um, is. Have you guys ever met a parent, let alone a single parent? Yeah. The fact, the, the, the idea that Jude Law could be this beautifully yeah. quaffed. Yeah. And with two little girls yeah. running around yeah. at well, home in what he fucking did make universe? A statement Just that insane. confused the shit out of me because spoiler alert, he's a widower, so his wife died. And two very years. good spelling on that man yeah. to be able to just spell it immediately. <laughs> I-D-O-W-E-R. Very good speller. But he says something when <gasps> at the end, spoiler alert, Cameron Diaz is like, I am going to stay for New Year's. It just it doesn't make sense for me to go home. And it's because she's in love with him. And he says I have the girls for New Year's Eve, which makes me think, who the fuck has them the rest of the time? Probably like the grandmother of the- You think? Of the widow. Yeah. The, dead wife? The, the, the dead wife. The dead it was, wife. I think it was the grandparents, but that line also confused the fuck out of me. And it's it's like a little convenient, help. right? The kids he are there double when they- the grandma. Yeah. Now, so. Cause he's also like being able to date yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And, so we're putting a lot of love on, on Jude Law, but I would love to go yeah. to the other side of the equation because yep. what delights me about this movie so, so, so much is that the consensus out in the world is that the true yes. hottie of this yes. film He's is none Jack other Black. than Mr. Yes. Jack sir. Black. Yes. And to sir. say that yes, fucking sir. warms yeah. my because, heart like none yeah. Because other. when he gets on screen, everybody's like, who, if you didn't know that Jack Black was Jack Black back in the day, I'm probably sure you did not. Nope. But you see him come on the cam on the screen, and you're like, "Why the fuck is he even standing near Kate Winslet?" And then you're <gasps> like, "I fucking love this dude." He's, At the end of the, yeah. by the end of the movie, by like I mean by the uh, the video store scene. Yes, when he like, sees his current girlfriend yeah, cheating on him. Yeah, even it's though just, he was on a date with Kate Winslet, no one's gonna say it. No, it was emotional cheating. Yep. Um, but. <laughs> no, I'm just gonna say it, it wasn't was exactly like, a good yeah, guy. It wasn't great. It's still so nice to see. Yeah. Like just a normal guy. Yeah. And I'm not saying that he's like unattractive. He's no. just just a, a guy that you would see a regular fucking guy. Dating someone. Yeah. It's not Jude motherfucking. <clears throat> but, the but the sweetest man. man of and just all a time. genuine guy. You know, yeah. like he's just walking around yeah. singing his little tunes. It's yeah. deep, 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 deep. And I, <laughs> he's a nerd. Yeah, he's a, he's but a, he's a successful he's an nerd earnest who's nerd. very passionate. And that's what gets me is like I never fucking understood shit about music. And when I heard Jared talk about music, I was like taking my pants off. I was right. like, whatever you say, person, <laughs> I'm yeah. obsessed with you talking about your passion. Because we love seeing masters of their of, craft. Of, of their craft. Yes. You love watching them. That's why anybody watches like, I don't know, House Hunters or some bullshit or like <laughs> Makeover <laughs> House 10,000. Or what, you know, Make ice road truck. Let's say ice road truckers. Okay, there you go. A specific where it's just identity. Like, yeah, everybody went yes. out of their way to yes. watch that because it's just like, damn, they're driving the fuck out of those trucks on that ice. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. They're so fucking good at it. I can't believe it. 
because you just want to see a master do something. Yeah. You watch Chef's Table. It's like, oh, oh my yeah. God, look at how it's good sexy. they made this. It is. It's an aphrodisiac to watch him be goofy about music composition, which right. I don't know if we said that, but the reason why Jack Black comes to He's a composer. the door is He's because a he works with he, Cameron Diaz in the trailer business. He scores yes. uh, films. Yeah, he does. And then by the end he of the movie, he scores. Eh? You know, what I also think makes him so attractive is that he is so cluelessly sexless for yeah. the first, yeah. like, in, he's in really, comparison yeah, to Jude he's Law. Really just, so, like, Jude, Jude Law is there to fucking yeah. smash, big old right? Cock. But Jack, <laughs> Jack Black, so it actually kind of drove me crazy a couple times where he just was like, he would be like, wow, you look so beautiful yeah. today, but had no no intention no, of yeah. sitting yeah. behind that, which is not how real no, men work. No, but he work. was being platonic <laughs> because he yes. had a girlfriend. Yes. And that's, and that's what was where, nice right, to see. Right. It was a very nice like relationship there. And then she found herself like slipping into yeah. love with him or yeah. like like with him. And it just it, it and then she realized, oh no, he is in a relationship. This yeah. is like a platonic thing I keep on forgetting. Yeah. And that I think that was really cool about their relationship. Okay, but like he when he kissed her on the cheek twice and lingered, because like he had been drinking he wine, doing, right? yeah, that's I what I'm saying. That. He was emotionally cheating before but the girlfriend was cheating. He knew that motherfucker yeah. knew. He knew what he was doing. But I will, I will give it to you that what I think like pushed Kate Winslet's character over the edge past like okay, this could be something more was seeing his struggle with the girlfriend cheating, like yeah. seeing a man first of all being diminished, embarrassed, yeah. humiliated like that. Like you have a choice as a woman to either go like, I'm so fucking turned off by that. Like ew, run or have empathy and sympathy and like open your heart and say like, Oh my God, you must be so hurt. And that vulnerability, like that wall crushing moment, I think was really what, and then to see it again, when the ex-girlfriend calls and is like, I miss you. I need you. I love you. And she's crushed again because she's watching this person that she has now built this weird trauma bond mm -hmm. become human and make a mistake and go back to someone that wasn't good for him. It's like that to me is the realism I got out of Jack Black's character that you don't get with yeah. the Jude Law fantasy. Like he's basically has like a ring glowing around him the entire fucking time. Can I give a fucking shout out by the way to the actress that plays Jack Black's uh, uh, ex-lover mm. by the end. Uh, her name is Shannon Sossaman. I don't know her from much. She was in this. She was in Knight's Tale. Oh, I think she is one of the most beautiful cutie. people. And I, I fucking love her. And I feel like we were robbed of, of her being a true star. And her name is Maggie Aww. in this movie. And I feel like contractually, I'm, yeah. a, I'm allowed to lust yes. after Maggie's. Acceptable. So I was fucking, just like the fact that Jack Black was hitting fucking Shashamon or whatever her name is, <laughs> and then getting with Kate Winslet, I'm like, Jack Black's yeah, having the time of his life Because he's a genuine movie. guy that yes. is really good at his craft. Yeah, He's the best. And, yeah, yeah, he was successful and had money. Let's not forget that. <laughs> I think it's also really funny in that um, video store scene, the first composer he brings up is Hans Zimmer, who scored uh -huh. the film. There you go. And, what, well, you're perfectly segueing into the next moment that makes me want to bring up another pleasure, which is that in that blockbuster scene, he also picks up The Graduate, and then it cuts to... Dustin motherfucking Hoffman yeah. for a three second cameo, yeah. which blows my fucking mind that because yeah. Kate Winslet's Kate motherfucking Winslet. She probably called all of her friends and was like, hey, remember me from Titanic? Come be in my movie for five seconds. The other amazing cameo that we get is Lindsay Lohan and James Franco in a trailer of Cameron oh Diaz's movie. Yeah. It's a mess. This is great. It's How is this getting so a bad funny. review? Can either of you tell me why? Because it's two lesser movies stitched together. I, well, let's talk about that fake trailer. It's so good. Yeah. You have this this alternate reality action movie where, wh what is the plot of the movie? Like Lindsay Lohan's Was dad. A spy, Do you remember it? And then now <clears throat> she became the target because her dad was a spy. That's honestly one of my one of my true guilts of the movie is that they did not give me more. Like the fact that they didn't give me a post credit uh, scene of what that yeah. movie is. It's so seeing James Franco and Lindsay yeah. Lohan. Just little, anytime you sprinkle a little bonus Lilo yes. into a movie. Yeah, fuck and this yeah. was two thousand six. This was like primo Lilo. Yeah. I don't even think James. <laughs> I don't even though. think James he Franco big was big and he shouldn't be big now, but you know, that's for another conversation. Uh, but to get <laughs> Dustin Hoffman, to get the Hans Zimmer reference, like I also like that this was a Hollywood self 
uh, like introspective yeah. to a degree where that didn't feel forced or wrong, which is why I don't know how this movie got such a bad fucking review. But also, uh, I mean, it, it was that, and I, I do love that they had like the little WGA awards and all yeah. that stuff. I really like that. But do you make that much off of cutting trailers? When I tell you, <laughs> that's what I wanted oh my, my dream job to be, yeah. was to make movie trailers. I don't think you make that much. You don't, right? She had a mansion with a pool. Yeah, uh, please, Let, please look at that. Let's Do talk you, about that because that's we could call this a guilt. We could call it a pleasure because it's part of what makes the movie so good. But they yeah, switch houses, the houses okay? Incredible. Cameron Diaz goes to a dream, a fucking a yeah. cottage. She goes to a cottage, cottage core, cute yeah. cottage. Kate Winslet gets a ten million dollar Brentwood yeah. mansion, <laughs> a gated mansion. And do you know how fucking expensive and stunning that yeah. house is? Like Are you million. out of your that's mind? At least, yeah. Uh, Miles, no, you, you have some In information Brentwood? about a movie trailer executive. Uh, it it ranges, but the middle. So the top eighty six percent of movie trailer editor, editors make four hundred and forty one thousand. Oh, a year. wow! So, that's pretty good. That's a great job. <laughs> she ain't no, buying that, that house. You're not buying that house though. That's a great job, but she no. ain't getting that fucking. That house had two stories, uh, wrap around, uh, like two wings. Had a giant automatic pool. curtain. It looked, it looked like a Fast and Furious villa. If I'm being honest, where it's just you like, just oh, this is the, this is where they roll up and then they get out. Yeah, related yeah, back to us. They get out and then there are girls <laughs> dancing or like somebody has a huge gun on them, yeah. so on and so forth. And then they're just like walking past them like it's no big deal. Who There's cares? Coke on the table. Yeah, there whatever. was an acrylic table in her living room, which I liked. Um, but to your point, Zach. I did like the that. The, that. The houses yeah. themselves are a little bit of characters too, right? Like that that was such a representation sure. of Los Angeles life and culture. And then this little cottage in Surrey, which Surrey's still a big fucking titty. Yeah, it's a big titty. <laughs> I don't say town it's and a, city. Uh, it's a Taylor Swift titty. <laughs> <laughs> Taylor Swift and cat titty. It's a Taylor Swift and cat titty. Oh, but like, I have to talk about the moment of switching houses because- it's funny, yeah. by the way, Kelsey, my assumption is that the UK is London and then yeah. like bump. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people, might, my image. people might say, tell you that you're right. But there is a, I was like up sitting up in my, you know, even though all the lights were off and it was very late at night, I was up in my bed, like jumping at the scene of them switching houses because when I tell you that uh -huh. scene of Cameron Diaz arriving with her huge bags, unpacking everything, that is to a T what women do on staycations. It's like, I'm finally at a house where I can fucking relax. The first thing a man's doing, taking his shirt off, grabbing a beer, sitting outside by the fucking jacuzzi. Women are like, let me clean this already clean house and put my clothes away in an immaculate manner like I'm still at home. That is, I just, is so is funny, not, Kelsey, because I, I wrote that down. I'm like, why am I watching her oh, put her my God. suitcase under a bed? I, I was like, this is, I didn't watch this when movie I tell work. you, this looked like I didn't a, go on vacation to work. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a, 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 a direct mirroring of me going up to Big Bear on like a solo, take care of myself weekend, really give myself some time. I get there, I do chores, and then I'm like, I'm bored. I want some dick or drugs. Like I have no idea what to do with myself after I watch like an entire series and chug three bottles of wine. It's like, we're trying to escape ourselves. We're trying to escape what we don't realize is we're trying to escape ourselves and you can never leave yourself. Oh God. You can only go to therapy. You can't keep home exchanging across the country. This is a spiral. It is when I go on when I go on vacation, I devolve into just a monster. Uh, I am the worst version of myself. I there's no order. I've never once in my life used the drawers at a hotel room. I take the clothes out of the suitcase and I throw no. them on the ground. I have a big old pile. And then at the and then at the end of the vacation, I grab the pile and I shove it oh. into the bag, and it barely zips. And I go, "Time to go home and take care of this oh mess." I made. I uh, just recently discovered the joys of putting your clothes in the drawer. Yes, yeah, you, you were away. You were doing a yeah, yeah. A I was staycation for exotic <laughs> four months. Oh god. Anyway, I was there away for four months, and I the first thing I did was put away my stuff in the drawer, <sighs> and I was like, "Oh, this you is gotta." 
Nice. Yeah. And then from there on <laughs> out, like every time I went, yes. went away somewhere, I would just take them it out. Just, and put it it in. allows a level of sinking in that you didn't realize was a part of the going away process. Yeah, because it's really weird. Because to still be living out of your literal suitcase or on the floor, right. it still invokes some sort of like I don't neither live here. here nor there-ness. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, I want to live here. Here. I yes. want to pretend that I live here. Yes. And I think that putting your stuff away is one of those big steps that you need to take in order to do that. Wow. He's growing up, you guys. It's really weird. I thought I thought there I was being <laughs> ridiculous and I thought uh, I, w I was turning into an adult person. You are. And then apparently that's just what people do. That's obviously one of the joys of the movie is and you get not one, yeah. but two full life upheaval, wish fulfillment, going somewhere else. Are there any other th details in in the house that you that you love? It just felt so like honest to like not only the characters but the locations themselves. Like I wanted that cozy little house in Surrey to have mugs that were hung up on the so wall. Cozy. I wanted like the LA house to have everything mechanical. Like it just it it fucking did it for me. It, it's really quite a cozy. Cozy mm. cabin. I've never lusted for that, but you it's hard not to when you're watching core? this movie. Oh, that's like all my Pinterest I guess I do now. I'm really leaning into my fucking gender stereotype this episode. I apologize to everyone. <laughs> Can I ask you're you You're letting guys? down the ladies. I know, I really am. They're like, God damn it. But when you watch this movie, you can't help. You become putty mm -hmm. to the Nancy Meyer. You just yeah, do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> can I ask, have either of you, even if only for a few days or weeks, ever fallen in love in another country? In another country, or like uh, not at home. Yeah, it feels, not it feels like it's it's a, like a, a <laughs> camp experience. Yeah, where you're just like, no, I'm going to go through all of this relationship within the the span of a month. Yes, or within the span of like two weeks. The highs, the lows, yeah, yeah, the yeah, goofy yeah, yeah. behavior, the yeah. falling in love in this movie. Ah, felt like I was injecting it straight into my motherfucking veins. Oh yeah, they got it got so right. Sheesh. Right, they were like. I, like laying in bed, like looking at each other this far away from each other's face. I was like, this is the dumb shit you do yeah. when you're living in a fucking fantasy world on right. vacation. You're in. Right. That's why Cameron Diaz yeah. was just like, oh, I'm just going to throw it all away mm -hmm. and not throw it all away. Like her relation or her career and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, what's another couple days? Mm -hmm. What's another couple weeks? Because, I mean, she's not seeing that dude again. Mm hmm. So I fell in love with a boy in London when I was 17 years old. Oh. I went away for a month. You went on I a holiday. You had a holiday. A holiday. Yeah. It was my birthday month and my the woman who raised me took me over to the UK and we, surprise, surprise, I come to this cute little UK cottage and I open the door and there he is. It's like her sister's son. It's Shut her up. nephew. My age. Shut like, the fuck stunner, up. Stunner, very tan. He's half Belizean, half UK. And wow. I was like, oh, and everything moved in slow motion. First guy to ever go down on me ever. Right wow. in the fucking history book. Oh my God, he a fucking Belizean married went him. down on you? <laughs> Mary, that's yes. fucking crazy. And the first time, and I was just remembering being like, this man is it. This is a man. Granted, I was like 16 at the time, so what did I fucking know about manhood? But You went from 17 to 16. Take me, let's, let's keep, get the age uh, going so right, up, right, not right, down. What? I was sexually act. Come on, guys. You well, know where I'm from. How old is he? Not 18, so that's all that there matters. It is. Okay, that is all that matters. <laughs> but he took me out to his pub. He showed me around to the stores. I went to a to a top shop for the first time in my life with him. Like these huge oh. moments. And then we'd come back to the house and we'd lay in the bed and just stare at each other and talk about music and movies and shit. And I just remember being like, this is it. And we made the grave mistake of trying to carry on with our relationship Outside. after yeah. I came back. That's what does it. And when I tell you I signed onto Facebook one day to like just check out what my boo was up to and he had been tagged in the club with other girls that were all over him and I sobbed for weeks. I sobbed for weeks. I couldn't believe my European lover yeah. had cheated on me so. And I just, I had this fantasy. 
A Belizean went <laughs> down on other girls. Down other girls. <laughs> I think that that's that's what makes us childish, you know. Where it's just like you, the fact that you believe that that was still gonna oh, work. Oh, Garrick, I didn't just believe it. I looked up for my first year of college to do a a study abroad, a study abroad in fucking London for this guy. I was Kate Winslet. But also Cameron Diaz. Do you see what I'm saying? Girl, I think girls have such <laughs> s- such remarkable love stories, and I'm truly jealous. You because, guys didn't have the same visual no, of love. No, because every time you'd go out and go out of your way and yes. be vulnerable, a girl would drop kick your heart back <laughs> into your chest. What? Like, are you fucking kidding me? For men? Yes, camp was horrible. No, <laughs> for what? us. Tell me. Camp fucking. S- we were boys, I don't know. Kelsey. I we genuinely have to, don't know. Uh, we had to go and pursue. We had to go out and fucking be like, oh, I think she's cute. Let me go and ask her to dance. And you go to dance. Get the chalk back in you. Get it, get it back in your chest. <laughs> go away. No. Yeah. No fucking way. So you you saying like, oh, I had I fell in love with somebody and blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't even get past the. Must it's be must nice. Be nice because I never got past the crush phase. Damn. I would get, I would spend two weeks of going up and like kind of being like, oh well, well maybe blah blah blah, really? brushing, it's sitting each, sitting next to each other on the bus, that whole thing going the out, long game. or like, and then like holding hands oh. once and <laughs> maybe a kiss on the cheek, and then you're back the fuck home. <gasps> there was no aspect of oh, I am, I'm about to get. I'm about to get a blowjob. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you know there was but no blowjobs by Belizeans. You guys were all no, no Belizean no, no, no. is going down. Listen, on that, okay? listen, but here's the other thing. My, yeah. my love story, my love story is like exactly like this movie. But if at the end Jack Black came to the the thing and was like, "Hey, I got back with Maggie. It's, it's, it's awesome." Yeah. And, that's it. and just then it's sad toxic and, and awful. That would be and my love break story. out of a cycle. I will say, obviously, my UK story. Like, I thought I was in love. It wasn't fucking love. I was a teenager, but, but that you're, you're that, a teenager and you still got to have that experience. But that this is also story. coming from. <laughs> This didn't happen in Florida for me. Right. This was a huge, mm. this was my movie moment. This was like the big love. This was my first introduction. Like, oh it's my beautiful. God, this yeah. must be what it is. Funny story. Like two years later, that same boy came to America and I was in a different relationship with the quarterback of the football team. No big deal. Sick. And he came to a party with us and he smoked weed cool. for the first time and got so fucked up that he threw up and passed out. And I had to call his aunt, AKA the woman who raised me to come pick him up. So Fuck you, and you know where you are. Little, little Belizean <laughs> bitch. Little UK <laughs> tolerance little can handle bitch. the drogue that came Can't from the South. Can't even handle a little weed. Oh, Can't even handle a little weed. Couldn't even handle no, Southern drogue. Yeah. I okay. I'm gonna hit us with a guilt, oh, and it's one that really cute. delighted me. Uh, I, I I enjoyed the movie very much. So this is all from a place of teasing. So Cameron Diaz is yeah. great in this movie, but I don't think that she totally nails pithy dialogue <laughs> and this movie wants so badly in the beginning to make her a fast talking New Yorker and they even cast Ed Burns as her love interest who's like yeah. a New Yorker yeah. talking like this Plain and they're face. in fucking yeah. Brentwood and I don't know why they're talking about it but she's literally like an anxious I, I, to me Cameron Diaz is like if you took Kelsey and me and put us together, it's like my neurosis in Kelsey's no like sense. girl boss body. <laughs> I, I did a little camera Your beat. neurosis in my boss. I mean, listen, I I understand it. And I also do not. Yeah, and I don't yeah like it. it's an abomination. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. She she literally goes, she says the word shtoy, yeah. okay? She fucking drops yeah. the Yiddish word for, no, no. in no fucking world is Cameron Ever. Diaz talking about shtupin, okay? They wrote her like a, and I'm sorry to evoke the name, they wrote her like a Woody Allen character, and it is not who Cameron Diaz no. should be playing. It's but very she, weird. I think she switches once she gets out she of her like, work phase. Yeah. She gets, once she leaves she LA, becomes she like, becomes this like, very, she actually loses everything that we liked about her, which was that she was like a strong, independent woman. She yeah, comes this, like, I was I was about to say that. Like <laughs> I thought the whole movie was going to be her 
like just being weirded out with how homey everything yeah. was because of the way she was, the way she got out of the car. She's like, "Cause you drive me down the lane," and he's like, uh, "No, fuck you." Oh, it's so and funny. And then she had to drag her shit, and In then that's heels. the end of that storyline. That's the end yeah. of that character trait. It's just like, oh no, yeah, I'm just enjoying my holiday now. Yeah, well, she she's like, oh, this bathtub, like so cute. Gonna figure that out later. Like she's like, a, I yeah. came here to be. English, whatever that means, but then immediately falls into it when, you know, she's faced with the yeah. relationship stuff is she just kind of, we yeah. don't get to see her be the boss, no. you know, or in, no, and again, just, making air quotes, the man in the pants. She's in the just dating somebody. Yeah. It was troublesome, which is troublesome for all. Uh, something that really made me laugh. So we talked about Nancy Myers. I mean, this is towards the end of her illustrious career and she is one of the greats. I can only dream to even sniff 10% of her greatness. But you know that you are kind of out of touch at this point in your career of writing where you're no longer tapped into what real people do when uh, you have the Santa Ana winds <laughs> as your meet yeah. cute. She's like, she just, all she knows so at this point in her life is Los Angeles. She doesn't know anything she doesn't else. Even know the, she doesn't even know Los Angeles outside of television, Yeah, outside of the weather. Outside of, yeah. Yeah. Outside of the way, it's just like the Santa Ana winds. It's just like, yeah, you barely feel those bitches. Like yeah. nobody cares it's about the Santa Ana winds. Windy. And I wouldn't even mention it. No. I would just be like, oh, it's it's windy today. Yeah, the the wind machine was on yeah, fucking was yeah. overdrive in this movie. They brought in fucking yeah. eight fans for every outdoor scene. It's never no, once been never. like that here. <laughs> there, there's one scene that I know you two will get because you're LAers, but it's when she, when Kate Winslet first arrives to Los Angeles and she's going down the PCH the wrong way. Yeah, she's going Very south annoying. from the what? LAX. The fuck? Very annoying. I was just like, no. That's this not even, drives me. You're insane. going the wrong direction. You're going the wrong where are you and going? That's an LA specific anger that only us three will get. But do you think we're yeah, fucking yeah. stupid, Nancy? Do you think yeah. that no, we're dumb, that I she mean, landed at LAX and took a helicopter yeah. up the PCH and then drove don't blame south? The writer, that is a hundred percent like director. A, a, a director or yeah. like the set. Uh, the She's the both. Oh, she wrote yeah, it and directed. That's right. I blame her most. Oh, fuck. That's right. She did direct this. Well, the holiday. Well, I'm curious, Garrick, as yes. an Angelino, I find that the, now that I right. live here, the cinematic, uh, we've talked about this a lot, but the, the cinematic uh, romanticization of Los Angeles, one creates such a false yeah. image of LA, right? That you get here and you drive down the right. coast like when in you Crossroads the airport. where no, you, you get to have don't. a hotel that's yes. on the beach and you're, you're just like schlepping around or you're just, um, you're, you're, you're bumming it. Yeah. And you get to just stay there. That's, That's five hundred dollars a night. I was gonna say thirteen hundred at night. least. Like yeah. a motel like in, in Redondo <laughs> yeah. is five hundred dollars right. a night. Yeah. But they were in Malibu. They were in Malibu, baby. That's you're right. I mean, this movie presents the most privileged, richest kind of pinhole version yeah. of this city but that you could possibly ever experience. I think the accuracy in it is mm -hmm. that's what these Hollywood folk live like yeah that's where they live they live yeah. in oh, for sure. they live in this like where jack black was living i was like oh that's completely mm -hmm. believable honestly i would switch their houses i would say that jack black's oh, character yeah. would live in cameron diaz's yeah. house and uh cameron yeah. diaz would live in jack black's house that's yeah. how like well off a lot of these people yeah. are yep. yeah. and you will you will drive up to their houses and you're like I didn't even know this fuck. I've lived here my entire life. I didn't even know this shit existed. What the fuck? What, how is this behind a hedge? I just, I just discovered Sherman Oaks <laughs> for the first time, and I'm driving around. I'm like, this there. shit is beautiful. Yeah. Why are you, uh, you guys are? You guys have been hiding this the whole time. Yeah. Fuck you. It's yeah. fuck you. This all is all of our friends moved out there. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, speaking of location and like the Brentwoodness of it all, can we please talk about? the best pleasure of like in the whole thing, which is that of oh? Kate slash Amanda's neighbor, Arthur, the old timey, right. Hollywood writer. writer yeah. who she befriends so because cute. he can't walk straight in an office. So she has to help him walk home in his little walker. And then she finds out he's won a fucking Oscar yeah. for screenwriting that he added the word kid to here's looking at you kid in Casablanca. That character was the fucking cutest. The yeah. 
absolutely adorable. And there's this scene towards the end when he he's afraid he doesn't want to go to his his award show because he's like, ah, it's just going to be like 10 people there. They open the door. There's a round uh, standing ovation for him. And like, I didn't tear up. I, I, I thought close. about it. <laughs> I, I was very close. I was like, this is beautiful. <laughs> and do you want to hear something even more beautiful about that? So that actor, Eli Wallach, is actually known to be one of the greatest character actors to ever appear on stage. He started his career in the 40s and he has over 90 no film credits. And so that character that he played, he very much was already he a was part that guy. of that era of Hollywood. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Um, he's won. Oh my Emmys. God. Do you know who he Eli is? Wallach, I just told you. Holy shit. No, he's the fucking ugly in the good, the bad, oh, and the ugly. Wow. Oh Jesus. my God. He was also in. No fucking Baby way. Is Doll. This, wait, is this real? Yeah. I mean, if you're on that's, IMDb. That's incredible. He was also in. Well, I just saw a photo of him. Hold on, hold on. I the need good, to make the sure bad, that this the ugly. Is, I literally yes. just had my it's world shook. It's the good, shook. the bad, the ugly, the Magnificent Seven, the Godfather Part Three, Baby Doll, the Godfather Part Two. He's a fucking legend. How the West was won. Uh, the Deep, Tough Guys, The Associate, How to Steal a Million, The Ghost Rider. How? Uh, let's see what else. Genghis Khan. That adorable man is the <laughs> ugly. Well, look at what he wow. used to look like. Because this. <laughs> Like yeah, he was he was the ugly. That's oh. him. For all of our viewers listening to this, you can't see. I'm holding up a picture. Well, they talked about Ennio Morricone in this movie. So as it well. was it was like a <laughs> nod to itself, <laughs> which again brings me back to how did this movie get rated so bad? It's Nancy Meyer haters. It's people <laughs> that hate love. It's people that can't stand <laughs> to be vulnerable for a moment and allow the cheese to just be cheese. Do you want me to no. give you a real answer? Uh, okay, fine. <laughs> well, it's just that, like you know. Look, I liked it, but yeah, I didn't love it. Was, it. I, middle, the movie was just too long. long. It was, it was just like, okay, road. I get when it. When I tell you I was I devastated it. it was ending, I needed to know what happened with Jude Law and Cameron Diaz's character. I needed to know what no, happened I with Jack Black. I thought that was a good ending. I think <sighs> I think it, the ending was, was strong. It just meandered in the middle. Feel the way you feel about Over the Garden Wall. And you wish, like, you don't need it, but you're like, damn, I'd fucking live to see another season. I Fine. Yeah, sure. Whatever other shit you fucking love. Yeah. This is how I feel about like, I genuinely could have used a sequel to this movie. You know what I would love a sequel for? Mm. Mayor of East Town. All right. Thanks so, for sharing. There you go. <laughs> I would love to see Kate Winslet I'm, be I'm so, American again. Aw. I will say I'm so grateful that they have the ending scene where yes. they show that they all met up yes. in London for their, their romance. Because the first thing that I was going to say is that these couples <gasps> don't last. Uh, one of my all-time favorite movies, The Apartment, directed by the incredible Billy Wilder. Um, it's just one of the true great romance movies. It's sad, it's dark, it's fucked up, it's incredible. And at the end, the characters get together. And Billy Wilder, who's one of the best writers of all time, he was asked, what happens to the couple after the oh, movie? No. And he goes, oh, they probably break up in about oh, three months. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's like, that is the untold truth of yeah, every rom-com, right? Like, they have this incredible moment. But, but they, like, they, no, it's yeah. not going to last. But in this movie, it does. But like, I think it's, it's no. really nice that they set up that they don't, they probably don't yeah. uh, get back together. Well, it's just that a, they don't holiday it's romance. a holiday romance. It's just like, Because realistically... Oh, they, you know, Cameron Diaz work. has to be in LA to do her work. Yeah. Jude Law isn't going to take his two daughters away from their grandmothers, who's the only support system, right. not at least until they're like 18. Right. So maybe Kate Winslet and, and Jack, Jack Black. Black. Maybe Kate maybe. Winslet moves to, to America. That's what I was thinking. Let's go, she baby. She could write from anywhere. Yeah. And she becomes author, Arthur's caretaker, maybe helps him write, polish up a few scripts. He introduces yeah. her to a bunch of big execs. And then she, she becomes a screenwriter. And she becomes Nancy. She's Myers. Nancy. My Wow, we just wrote the ending. Wow. You're welcome. People. Wow, wow, wow. Did you notice um, at when Kate Winslet went to Cameron Diaz's house and there's this huge wall of DVDs? <laughs> oh which, my God, wow, I know what you're going to say! She owned yes. Jiggly on DVD. <laughs> my eyes went directly to okay. the fact that the one DVD Jiggly. that stuck out That's was so Jiggly. funny. And she keeps them in alphabetical order. The movie that she chose to watch yep. was Punch Drunk Love, which I'm like, okay, She's Kate Winslet. She's okay. cool. How about this? They fucking house swapped. Okay, sure. Oh, you get your car. Yeah. You get all yep. their stuff. They house swapped a dog. That, that is literally what I do when I go out of town 
it's a new thing and I've made a TikTok about it. You guys should all sign up. It's called Trusted House Sitters and it's like a yearly membership and they vet you and they train you and all this stuff. You can go stay at people's houses all over the fucking world for free if you watch their dogs. So I'm like, I go, no way this is so good to be true. I go on and the first thing I see is a mansion in Malibu and all I have to do is watch her two crusty old white dogs. And I'm like, I can stay at your fucking house for free and have dogs with me? Bitch, I should be paying y'all a lot of money for this experience. Yeah. Old people love crusty dogs. Yeah. But that's a service. That's like a brilliant business plan, business model. But I don't understand how that w- anybody would pay for anything there. What do you mean? Like where does where does the money come in for? Like the, the membership to be vetted and you have to like be you can't be a creep or like have Yeah drug and animal charges against you or something. That's like part of the service that you pay a monthly and they connect you with people. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. Brits. Do you say happy Christmas? (laughs) You would have learned that. Do you fucking, yeah, they do. They do. It was a culture shock for everyone. That is unacceptable. That's why I've only bought three movies. The two most Christmassy Harry Potter films. To hear them say happy. And holiday. Yeah. Because they all say happy Christmas. Happy Christmas, Harry. Happy Christmas, Ron. I'm not a nationalistic person. I'm not even a Christmas lover, but I am ready to throw down and have another revolutionary war <laughs> over, over happy that Christmas. Fact. But Fuck we y'all. say happy everything else. No, happy Easter, Christmas Easter, happy Thanksgiving, happy birthday. Yeah, it sounds yeah, gross. Merry Christmas just flows off the happy top. Happy Hanukkah I feel works. more cultured when I say happy Christmas. I don't think it works in an Ugh. American accent. I think that's happy Christmas. Thing. Happy, happy Christmas, Ari. That was pretty good. That was bad. Yeah, that works. <laughs> I'm on board with that. <laughs> yeah, that's because you have to swallow yeah, the happy. H. You can't actually say it. You have to say happy, happy. happy. Christmas, Ari. And it worked because it's Jude <laughs> fucking law. That man could call me a twat and I'd be like, okay, yeah. <laughs> whatever you say. There was, I forgot what movie it was, but I was just like, Jude law is handsome. <laughs> yeah, but isn't was, he like a piece of shit? Oh, is he? I think he's a piece of shit. <gasps> don't you oh, say remember that. remember the whole nanny scandal? What are you talking about? You don't remember the nanny scandal where he cheated no. on his wife with a nanny? No. And it was like a big deal. But he's so good at I Heart Huckabee. Did you guys watch that? Yeah. Kelsey, I'm curious for you. Where do you like, okay, this movie has two mm-hmm. heartthrobs, Jack mm-hmm. Black, mm-hmm. Jude Law. They're both standing on two sides of the mm-hmm. aisle. Who's getting your rose? Oof, how dare you? Who are you, who are you going for? She's hot as shit in this movie. She looks incredible. Her <laughs> right. skin is A+. Plus. Her hair is so perfectly coiffed. Those baby blues. Her outfits for 2006, bitch? Yeah. Serve. Fantastic. I loved her uh-huh. in this. Um, uh-huh. But if you're going to make me choose a man. The fucking apples of her cheeks. The little fucking crab apple cheeks yeah, that she I has. Yeah, I think I'm going to, I think I'd have more in common with Jack Black. He's funny. He's goofy. And he's in the business. Oh, yeah. And he's passionate. Like, no offense to dads out there, but no fucking thanks. We stand. What about you guys? Who are you choosing? Um, the movie was uh, Sherlock Holmes 2 when I was just like, oh, Jude uh, Law's handsome. <laughs> that's like, what it took? Yeah. I was like, oh, I get, yeah, that, this is it. The first one, he's no, not super handsome, one. but in the second one, I was like, oh, oh yeah. okay. Cameron Diaz Im- oh. immediately. Yeah. There's uh, without question. Yeah. Cameron Diaz is one of the hottest people on the planet. Damn. What's she up to these days? I hope. I, she married one of the people from Good Charlotte and she decided she doesn't want to act anymore. Insane. Wow, her fucking cheeks. I, I, have, I have a thing for high cheekbones. Yeah, she's got them. My God, that smile, megawatt. Also, we stand a holiday movie that has a fucking Hanukkah oh, scene. Yeah. Love nice. that shit. We yeah, exist too. Latkes, Makes wine. me feel all warm yeah. and bubbly. So we got some fun facts. Uh, one, this movie was supposedly written with these actors in <gasps> mind, which totally blows right. my mind because Cameron Diaz, again, is not who you write Even Jack uh, fast talking New Yorker <laughs> yeah. for. I, that's, what, that's what it said. Oh. I don't believe it. I, I don't buy it. I like it. I feel like Jack Black's agent was like, we're going to get you in a rom-com, bro. And, the, and Nancy Meyer's like, all right, Honestly, come on. Honestly, I would have liked to see him in more rom-coms. Because I want to see is, him in so many rom-coms. Yeah, he's just I would have loved to see him in like Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Ah. <laughs> or, I feel like he was in that movie, even though I know he wasn't. It feels it, like he yeah, was for some strange reason. Just, it was his vibe. It, I think it's because the poster has the same font as uh, a lot of movies that he's in. And maybe that weird connection. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. 
That's really good, though. Uh, a few months after this movie uh -huh. came out, the popularity of house swapping was through the roof, so much so that the police of England had to <gasps> issue a warning against it what? due to identity fraud and oh, murder. No. Nice. See, that's why you pay well, a service and a fee. <laughs> also, in London, if it was murder, that means you're getting stabbed because they like stab each other and prick each other because they yeah, don't have any They don't guns. do guns there. Man, that's unsettling. Yeah. I got a sick security system, so don't fuck with me. I will fuck you up. <laughs> don't ever try. We talked about the Dustin Hoffman cameo on an episode of The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Dusty revealed that that cameo was <gasps> unplanned. He was driving no. by a blockbuster. What? He saw film equipment and cameras no. and doing what Dustin Hoffman does. Dusty said, hey, what's Shut happening? And Nancy Myers up. was like, oh, Dustin, what's up? Do you want to be in a scene? They came up with a scene. It made that it into the movie. That's fucking sick. Dustin Hoffman uh, is my fucking guy, <laughs> that man. That is I insane. Love Ever since Hook came out i was like this is my fucking dude i watched hook so many me, times same. it would go ace ventura and when nature yep. calls hook. oh my god we had the same child on yeah we did, yeah, we did. just <laughs> on opposite ends movies. of the fucking country and spectrum entirely uh, yeah yeah exactly but holy it's shit just, that's yeah, so cool i i've i've loved that man for my entire life robin williams yeah Dustin hoffman and that's it jim carrey <laughs> <laughs> Um, those are my three uh, white and that, trios. Speaking of Jim what? Carrey, all four lead actors have worked Aww. with Jim Carrey. Have fun. Wow. <laughs> that thing about Dustin Hoffman is so crazy because that would be a production fucking nightmare if it was anybody else. Like, I bet you even some AD oh. and producer on set, unit production manager was going like, we just can't fucking throw a scene. You, where's the legal on that? Is he going to sign a paperwork? Like, there's no way that that happened easily. But that was probably like back in the, the day. The assistant director who is in charge of yeah. schedule losing yeah. their fucking just, mind He's like, no, over guys, that. doing a favor. It's really cool. Watch me do yeah. this thing. Hey. That was my impression of Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> yeah, but like, what were they filming in the That was a good one. <laughs> Him being cute. No, 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 was no, that but scene? like, I mean, if if they were already set up, mm -hmm. they were setting up the film it, it, equipment and all that stuff, I guess they were already filming the walking around scene in the blockbuster. Mm -hmm. And then- It wasn't a big deal to just throw them in? I guess not. You know- I Look, Dusty's a one take man, all right? Throw them in, throw them out, bada bing, bada boom. The, but there's also something real fucking cocky about being Dustin Hoffman seeing some cameras set up in fucking Burbank one night when he's walking his dog and just going, I'm going to insert myself. <laughs> Listen, this. man, I would have done the exact same thing. If you, I'm Dustin Hoffman. I, I do the same thing all the time. They just, they're yeah, like, they're like, we're going to call premises. the cops. Yeah. I would do the same thing. Yeah. I would 100% just like walk in and be like, oh, I, what, what's going on? What's going on here? Blah, blah, blah. And then just watch like an extra freak out and be like, yeah. this fucking Dustin Hoffman. He just walked. And especially this is, when did this movie come out? Like, 2006. 2006. Yeah. He's he's still in. He's, he's very cool. Very still. cool. Very famous. Yeah. Like that's the same shit with, um, what's um, Caddyshack boy? Uh, he, oh, um, fucking <laughs> the community guy. You're talking about Chevy Chase. Chase. So you're talking about Rodney oh, Dangerfield. Oh my God, not Rodney Dangerfield. Either. Oh, um, oh, Bill Murray. Not, uh, Bill Murray. Bill Murray's fucking cool. He threw a bottle of wine through my window once on the highway. Really? Yeah. Sick. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Nobody will believe you," and then drove away. There, there you go. Mm -hmm. It's that same shit. Yeah. Where it's just like, cool. I'm just gonna. That's what he I does. Used to have a sticker of his face on the back of my car that said Chai Vaughn, and he was driving next to me. How many times do we have to hear Bill Murray doing "Nobody Believe You"? Nobody will believe you stories until we all say maybe Bill Murray yeah, has Bill a problem. Bill Murray 100 has a problem. <laughs> Oh, Bill fucking Murray. Because I've heard so many of those stories. I'm like, this dude's drunk yeah, on power. Yeah, this guy's like absolutely <laughs> abusing it, hurting no one. Yeah. But just like, come on. But it's the same shit. It's, it's like, like cool, 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 cool. Yeah. You got a problem. <laughs> he's going behind bars. He's he's bartending. Yeah. He's learning. He's living his life. I think that he's using fame the correct way. There you go. Unproblematic. Yeah. It's there just like, go. oh, look at this silly thing I could do. I can, I can just walk onto a set. Yeah. Fuck it. Why not? I got power. Yeah. So it's now the time where we must decide, is this movie a pleasure, a guilty pleasure, or just plain guilty? Garrick, I'm curious I think your it's, opinion. <gasps> you want to go first? I don't know. God. I think it's a, I, I, I think it is <laughs> you to say it? A, a pleasurable guilty pleasure. <laughs> I'll because take it. Because it is, it is 
I think it's right in between those two of guilty pleasure and pleasure where I, I would I if, if I was rating it on a scale, I would add a 0.5 at the end. Wow. Because it's not a bad movie. It's no. not like a complete waste of your time. No. But then it's also not good enough to ride Wrong. for like really hard where Wrong. you're just like, this is, oh my God, I fucking love this movie so much. So I can't <laughs> even call it a guilty pleasure either. So it's really weird. It's just like a, a nice time. Stop it. Say it's a fucking pleasure. It's a movie. I, it's, it's a, it's a it's nice, a nice movie. film. That's what yeah. it is. Okay. I'm yeah. taking that as a fucking pleasure. For me. And you know what? I'm so glad. I, and I'm so glad that it means the yeah. world to you and to so many yeah. of our viewers. And Kelsey, tell me why. Okay. Take it if home. you love the Grand Budapest Hotel and also <laughs> the whimsy and story and love connection that that movie gives you, then let me tell you what, bitch. Put on some cozy motherfucking socks. Heat up your Mission Chill by Zaddy Coty. Get you a pumpkin nut cookie. Cozy up with yourself with that with that date from Bumble. You can get your lover of a long time, or you can sit around the fire with your family because you are gonna feel fucking good for an hour and a half. Thank you, Nancy Myers. This movie is without a doubt a pleasure. Nice. Period. Nice. <laughs> I uh, want to go home and watch it again. Oh. <laughs> I'm at Courtney on all the things. things. I'm Gary Bernard on all the things. Oh, and until next time, you really thought those kids were <laughs> Oh, my God. <laughs>